Hey guys, my name is Heather and today we are going to be talking about tissue culture, the pros, the cons, and why you should care. If you're interested in videos like this, please hit the subscribe button, drop a comment down below, and let's get right into it. So what is tissue culture? Well, tissue culture is a new way of propagating plants, except it's done in a lab and it's done in a very large scale. Now, these lab techs are actually taking a very small sample of their plant of interest and they're putting this sample in a sterile environment with nutrients, growth hormones, and sugars, and they just wait two to three weeks for it to grow. Once it grows and they get these little plantlets, they'll go in and separate these plantlets from the node and put them in a new agar in order for it to multiply. They'll wait another three weeks and you'll have more plantlets in which they'll separate and then put it in new agar and boom you just increase your plantlets by like tenfold it's it's crazy to believe that we're just doing this now but i mean hey we're moving on to more rare plants because i'm positive that we've been doing this for our common house plants so one of the pros of tissue culture is that it's pest free so you're not going to have any virus bacteria or pests on the actual plant itself now with that said please still isolate your plants because chances are if you bought this tissue culture plant from a greenhouse or a store the neighboring plants nearby may have pests as well like you just don't know so even if it's theoretically pure and sterile the neighboring plants are not so just be mindful of that i don't want you to think that you can just grab a plant off the shelf and introduce it to your collection I think that there's no repercussions to that because sometimes there may be but if you're growing it at home it's sterile so that's that's fine but when you're buying it at a store you should still be careful and not just introduce it to your collection another pro of tissue culture plant is that it's more affordable for the average consumer because it's largely produced we're able to pick them up at our local nursery or store for a fraction of the price. For example, these variegated fried eggs, I was able to pick them up for, I believe, $100 each, which is like unheard of because they are so rare and hard to find. Now, the term rare, I feel like it's loosely used. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, rare to me means it's difficult to obtain and when something is difficult to obtain in terms of plants it's because one it's slow growing two the variegation isn't stable and you know it's constantly covered in pests like variegated fried eggs or fried eggs in general are known for spider mites so i was never able to actually get one from overseas because she said that they were always infested with spider mites and the variegation on her plants were very low. So she would chop them all down and wait for it to grow again. And that tells me that variegated fried eggs are unstable in variegation. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. And the fact that it is prone to pests makes it difficult for anybody to sell. So that's why variegated fried eggs were considered rare plants. But... Now with tissue cultured, you're able to go to the store and pick one up for like $100. So that's a bonus. So how do you know you have a tissue cultured plant versus the original plant? Well, the original plant is grown via chop and prop. So there's always going to be one growth point versus a tissue cultured plant. They're grown in clusters because it's grown in vitro. So like I had mentioned earlier, these lab techs are actually spending a lot of their time separating the plantlets from one another. And sometimes when the plantlet doesn't fully separate or when the roots are too entangled, it's better to just leave it alone and put it into their peat moss and just let nature do its thing. Eventually, I'm sure the more mature plantlet will just absorb the other one and it'll just die off. Or if you're like me, you'll just pluck off the little baby leaves and and let the more mature plant continue to grow. You're probably wondering which is better, tissue culture plant or the original plant? In my opinion, I think the tissue culture plant is far superior than the original plant. And that's because you can manipulate it to do whatever you want, even its adaptability to the environment. Meaning a plant that usually thrives in bright and direct light, 
if you're able to get yourself a tissue culture plant and have it thrive in low light settings, take a sample of that, have it multiply, and then those plantlets will now thrive in low light settings. That's amazing. You can even have it thrive in low humidity. I mean, think about what we're currently doing now, especially during the winter. We're stressed out because there's not enough light, there's not enough humidity, and don't forget about the heat. So I don't know, I think tissue culture is actually really very cool. I think it's neat that we're able to help preserve nature and to just be able to manipulate these plants to growing the way that we want it to. Another thing that is really neat about tissue culture is that a plant with certain variegation or certain features that you like, you can take a sample of that and you're able to replicate it because of science. So one of the questions that I had when I was getting into tissue culture plants was, are these tissue culture plants more high maintenance and finicky than the original plant or imports? And the answer is, it depends. <laughs> It depends on you <laughs> because personally for me, when I received these two plants, I knew that they were in peat moss plugs and they had just arrived. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, well, if they just arrived and they're currently in peat moss plugs, that means that it probably just went from the agar straight into these uh, plugs for maybe a couple of weeks. But even then, while it was in the um, the peat moss plugs, they were probably still receiving 100% humidity before they're even sent off to the greenhouse or nurseries. So in my head, I was thinking, ah, oh, these guys probably need 100% humidity. So what I did was I bagged them. I bagged them, waited for them to give me new leaves, and then removed the, the plug, put them back into soil, and now it's giving me a new leaf. And the variegation is still very stable, so I'm happy. All right, so before I let you guys go, I do want to touch upon variegation in tissue culture plants. Now, I understand that the whole purpose of tissue culture is to get a sample from the mother plant that has these particular characteristics and to replicate that. Now, you have to remember that variegations are not normal it's a genetic mutation. So that means that one particular mother plant may not have strong genes for that genetic mutation. So sometimes if you get a sample from the plant, the plantlets may or may not have the same variegation. It may be imbalanced. That's why some of these are more highly variegated than others, even though it probably came from the same mother plant. That's just how life is. So I think maybe in a couple of years, the scientists will be able to pinpoint, oh, these set of plantlets have strong variegated genes, so they will be used to replicate more plantlets for the future. But as of right now, as far as I know, variegation is still unstable in the original plant and in vitro. So maybe in a couple of years. <laughs> In any case, I hope you guys enjoy videos like this, and if you're actually interested in more tissue culture plants, please drop a comment down below because I am thinking of doing more tissue cultured videos. For example, how to actually do it, how to propagate, what types of tools you need, um, things like that. If you do want more videos like this, please let me know in the comments and hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss the video. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye!